All right. Let's do this. It's time to get the answer to that question. You know what I want to know. Yep. Okay, so here we go. We're going to answer this question, and I'm going to try to do this as fast as I can because there is so much to tell you about, and uh, it's going to take a little while. So here we go. Um, super fast. Super fast. Can you cook a chicken by slapping it? Here's a chicken. Here's what we want to know. First off, information we need right at the start. Now I'm going to go super fast. So uh, you can always pause this later if you want to hear all the information. Here we go. What do I need? I need to know the temperature change. The temperature is going to be changing from a ambient temperature of 20 degrees. In other words, Roomba temperature, because I'm assuming I'm slapping a dead chicken and a dead chicken is going to be the same temperature as the room. So it's going to be going from 20 to 75 degrees. How do I know it's supposed to be 75 degrees? Why here? Because in this website here, it tells me the safe internal temperature of a cooked chicken is going to be 75 degrees Celsius. So that's where I'm starting from. Mass of the chicken. How do I find out the mass of a chicken? Shoot, that's easy. I just got to go to this site. Wait, that's the wrong site. Where's the site? Okay, you're just going to have to trust me on that one. I found the site somewhere. Told me that the mass of a fryer chicken, we're assuming a typical fryer chicken, in other words, the ones that you usually cook and eat, is going to be 1.36 kilograms. In other words, 3 pounds. Heat capacity of a chicken. There, that's the website I was going to tell you about. I went to this. This is where... Uh, a fantastic site known as the engineering toolbox the engineering toolbox gives you all sorts of things that engineers have taken the time to go out and experiment with in other words collected the data you and I need here is the specific heat of all sorts of food items what is specific heat you may ask well it's a pretty simple concept the idea is that depending upon what kind of material you're using it has the ability to lose or gain heat faster or slower than other materials that's why if you're having a delicious uh, meal of bimbambap, when they're cooking it, they put in an aluminum pot on the stove. That's because aluminum will conduct the heat very, very quickly and therefore heat up all the food inside. But when you're given that delicious uh, bimbambap, you're going to be giving it to you in a stone bowl. Why a stone bowl? Because stone takes its time sending heat through itself. Therefore, the heat capacity is dependent upon the material, and just like everything else, chicken has it too. 3,100 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. So we got our starting point. What's the next thing? We're now going to calculate the heat energy needed to cook the chicken. That is usually indicated by the, uh, the term Q. Uh, that means the mass of the chicken multiplied by the specific heat of the chicken multiplied by the change in temperature. There it is. What do I got? 231,880 joules of energy. That is what I need to do. That is how much energy I need to give that chicken to cook it. Great. Now what? I am now going to move on to slap information. Why? Because now i got to figure out how much energy I'm producing with a single slap. In order to get that information, I'm going to need the mass of a hand or forearm. Where do I get that information? I'm going to get that from here. This is X run net body segment data. In this, it points out that I'm using a hand, but also actually a portion of my slap is also going to be coming from the forearm. So there's a combination of the two. My mass uh, calculated in that respect is going to be 1.5 kilograms for a combination of some forearm and some mass. Now, secondly, how am I going to actually calculate the speed of a hand or forearm? Well, that sent me down a rabbit hole of finding uh, possibly on the internet some information about what the speed of a slap is. Now, yeah, I, the only main information I got was from this site. It is from Scientific American in 1979. It is talking about the physics of karate. It points out that your beginning student, and we will assume I'm a beginning student, can throw a karate chop at about 20 feet per second. That is roughly 6 meters per second. So that gives me a starting point. While I'm at it, though, since I was going through that rabbit hole, it also got me into this wonderful sort of... Uh, <laughs> This website that's all about slap contests. Yes, apparently people like to have contests where they just slap each other. Here's an example. 
this is one where these two gentlemen are going to see who can slap each other the hardest. So, this is what happens when you do research. So let's just watch for a moment and see someone get slapped. Uh huh. And slappy. And that slap a hay. Okay, that's all we need to do for that. Slapping the chicken. Now what are we gonna do? In order now that I've got all the information needed, I'm gonna calculate the heat energy produced by a single slap. That is essentially kinetic energy, which is an actual easy equation one half times the mass times speed squared that is all i need so 0 0.5 1.5 kilograms 6.096 meters per second squared and i get for each slap 27 roughly 28 joules of energy excellent but as you may or may not know of course not all the in the energy in fact most of the energy going in uh, from the kinetic energy is not automatically transformed into heat energy. So therefore, I need to figure out how to get the portion of that that actually becomes heat. In order to do that, I'm going to use an equation of momentum before and momentum after. This is the best way of a figuring out what my final velocity. In other words, if you look at the equation here, the momentum before is only... Uh, by the way, momentum is a concept that you may not know about. It is nothing more than the mass of an object times its velocity or its speed. So in other words, here I have a hand multiplied by the speed of the hand, and I get this value, 9.1 kilogram meters per second. That's my momentum before. Notice that the chicken has no momentum because if it's mass times velocity and the chicken ain't moving, then the speed is zero. Therefore, it has no momentum. However, I am looking at what's known as an inelastic collision. An inelastic collision is a type of collision we say in physics where the two things stick together. And I am going to assume that the chicken and the hand will stick together, therefore have a combined mass and a final velocity. Using this equation, I get a speed after impact of 3.2 meters per second. 3.2 meters per second. I would like to add that while I was doing this, I also went to look at some slow motion physics to see what else uh, I can get. I use this as another way of calculating the possible final velocity, assuming that a stomach is similar to a chicken. I got 3.27 meters per second. Since these two values were so close to each other, it looked like I was on the right track and I felt good about what I'd calculated so far. Now, why do I need the speed? That's how I get the energy loss. How do I get energy loss? That is going to be a difference in the kinetic energy before and after. I will not have the same amount of kinetic energy afterwards. Some of it got lost to heat. Therefore, with these calculations below, you can look at it later if you want. I am going to be getting a certain amount of energy lost to both heat and sound. I am assuming it's a minimal, minimal amount of going towards sound and most of it's going to heat. Therefore, I'm happy to say 13.23 joules of energy lost to heat per slap. Now, the question is, how many slaps do I need? Basically, I'm taking the total amount of energy that I need to cook the chicken and dividing about the uh, energy per slap. That gives me a total of 17,527 slaps. Is this the final answer? Hell no. Not even close, because I have a problem. Let's consider this situation. Say I've got a pot of water. My pot of water is going to be heated to a certain temperature. Now, let's say I turn the heat off and leave it there. Does the water stay at that temperature? Of course it doesn't. If I left that water and came back after four or five hours, I would find that, that my water has now dropped to room temperature. It has cooled off, and this is key. What I'm realizing here is a problem with every single calculation done on the internet. The one thing that everybody forgot about. The fact is, while it is being heated, it is also cooling down. Every time I add some heat energy with the hand slapping, the ambient temperature is cooling off that chicken at the same time. So in other words, I need my rate of heating to be bigger than the rate of cooling. But in order to do all this, I got to figure out what my rate of cooling and heating is. Therefore, we're back to the drawing board. Information needed, the rate of heating. Well, this one was a bit a little actually quite easy because all I was doing was taking the number of degrees of heating that I needed, that was 55, and dividing by the number of slaps. Therefore, I have technically 
per slap my rate of heating. Now this could increase if I increase the number of slaps, but right now we're going to assume that we're slapping at one slap per second, which means this is a rate per second. The tough part comes when we start dealing with the rate of cooling. Because as soon as you look at this, you're looking at a change in temperature over per time with this beautiful thing. Negative kT, which is a function of time, plus kT, which is the room temperature, plus C, C being the rate of heating. This is my cooling rate. This is actually my root of, technically this is the rate of cooling plus the rate of heating. This is my total, my total equation I want. I have to calculate K. K is equal to HA over MC. This is, H is the, what is known as the thermal conductivity of a material. This is similar to heat capacity, but slightly different. I also need to find out the surface area of my chicken. I did that by um, looking at it in terms of its volume, its density, and assuming that's a spherical object. I had to simplify my chicken and pretend it was a big ball. That was the only way I could do it, and I got myself this, 0 0.05 meters squared. I'm also dealing with the heat capacity of the chicken, which we already know is 3,100 joules per kilogram degree Celsius, and the mass, which remains at 1.36 kilograms. That gives me a K value such as this. This is where, if that hasn't already happened, things are getting well beyond your ability to comprehend because we are moving into, yes, calculus. We're moving into calculus. It's the only way to talk about it because really the rate of heating is usually dependent upon a fixed temperature. But in this case, since I am continually changing the temperature, the rate of cooling changes as well. Therefore, I got to first start off, if you can see here, this equation, which is a variation of what I had already shown you. And then I have to what's called integrate. I have to integrate the equation. Here it is from 20 to 75 degrees. And I end up getting this equation. T equals 1 over negative K, negative K, sorry. Natural log of negative KT final plus KT of the room plus C minus 1 over negative K log. Natural log of negative KT initial plus KT room plus C. Now, this is, uh, while I'm at it, I already showed you how I calculated for K. That's all there. This is me working out the surface area of the chicken, uh, working out the, the H value. Here's some spots of where I did that. I plugged everything in. I got, here's the calculations as I went through it. And then what was the solution? It was no, no, it doesn't work. Now, you might not be able to notice, but the biggest problem is right here. I'm going to mark it off as red. There's my problem. In my final equation, I have a natural log of a value that is negative. When you do a function of natural logs, you cannot do negative numbers. You cannot log a negative number. It is not possible in terms of that type of operation. So I have a problem. What is my big deal? Why is this not happening? It is because I am not heating enough. I am not doing it fast enough. So the, the remainder of this is what I did to try to solve this problem. First off, I tried more slaps. I increased it by doubling. In other words, I think reasonably the most number of slaps that someone could get into is maybe twice a second. That's, oof, that's every half second you're giving a full hard slap. Then I said, no, that's still not working. I'm still getting too low. In fact, I realized what C value I needed. Here's the value I needed. I needed to get that. How do I get it? Well, I can get it if I can get in roughly 20 slaps per second. That's right there. So how can I do it? Maybe 10 people slapping twice a second all hit the chicken at the same time. Does that work? Well, I went back, checked out the surface area of a chicken, and then I calculated and got the surface area of a hand. This is where I got the uh, surface area of a hand. And what did I get? maybe four hands maximum covering a regular sized chicken. In other words, it is not humanly possible to get all your hands hitting a chicken at the same time if you need to get 10 people doing it. So what was my next plan? I tried out maybe a slapping gauntlet. Perhaps I just need to increase the amount of energy produced by one slap. Didn't work. Didn't even get close. I worked out all the calculations. Here they are. I didn't even get, uh, it, you know, if anything, it made it worse. It made it worse. So I, I considered possible fly swatters, but then here we have, if you look there, what if I simply made 
the chicken bigger. Now, there's no real chicken that's bigger than that, but what about a 30-pound turkey? What about a 30-pound turkey? Would that work? I went to work. How much larger is that? 30 pounds means I'm now dealing with a much larger mass, 13.6 kilograms. I went through the surface area. I looked at it. It turns out with a 30-pound turkey, you can get 15 hands on it at the same time. Oh, my God. I could possibly do this. So I worked it out. I can still do the whole all the calculations. I'm going to work with 10. I'm still going to work with the same number, 10 people slapping it twice a second together. Um, the turkey's way bigger. I worked out the amount of energy. Remember, the earlier energy was roughly 280,000 joules of energy. A turkey will require 2 million joules of energy. It's a lot more, but hey, let's go with it. I worked out all the other values, the area, the mass, the, the H value, the K value, plugged it all back in and got a number. I got an actual number. Look at that. Oh, look at that. I got a number, which is actually... Surprisingly, not too long. Three and a half hours of constant slapping twice a second by 10 people all slapping simultaneously means that they would have to slap roughly 250,000 slaps. That's how many slaps I need. Look at that. 250,000. 250, 250, uh, I should make this smaller. 250,000 slaps. That's what you need. That's going to do it. Not that little dinky little 40,000 slaps that they say on the internet. They are so off because they did not consider the fact that reality demands that your your object is going to cool as you, uh, as you heat it. So, uh, I hope that uh, puts some minds to rest. Can you slap uh, a chicken and cook it? Uh, no. But if you got nine friends, uh, you can pull it off with a turkey. So... There's your answer. Uh, I hope you all can uh, rest easy tonight now and, and go, whew, thank God we know this. Uh, and I will now go look at the other questions. Okay, bye.